What's up guys, Humphrey here. Today we're going through, in my opinion, one of the best methods to invest your money and that is through the use of index funds. These are great for those of you that want a set it and forget it type of strategy and it's even a strategy that legendary investor Warren Buffett swears by and says that quote, the average investor should put their money in a low cost index fund and that's his primary recommendation. By simply contributing and investing regularly into these funds, your wealth will grow over time. Now I do want to note that this is a long-term investment. It's not some type of get rich quick type of thing. You aren't gonna see your portfolio double in the span of a few months, but if you are the type of person that likes getting rich slowly and steadily, then this strategy is for you. In this video, we're going to explain the nuanced differences between index funds and mutual funds, because I think it's important to know the difference. And then we'll go over my top five funds. And I've actually updated this list since my last video on the subject back in 2021. Now, if you would like to just skip ahead to the top five index funds, you can definitely do that through the timestamps and chapter markers. But I think that if you do stick around around for the context, you're not only going to understand more about investing, but be more self-assured with those choices. All right, so a brief definition of an index fund, it's basically an investment that you can buy within your brokerage account. It's a popular term, but to understand how it works, we need to actually explain a different type of fund that came first, which is known as a mutual fund. A mutual fund now is when investors pool their money together to invest in stocks and other investments, and the fund typically has a professional money manager making decisions on behalf of that fund. So let's just pretend for a second, you and I, we both have $100,000 each, that's pretty dang nice. And maybe another 100 people also have $100,000 and we all pool our money and give it to a money manager. And that money manager's job is to invest in a selection of stocks or investments on our behalf in order to get the largest return. In exchange for this service, the money manager will charge you a fee because, hey, they need to feed their kids and buy a house as well. But the idea is that they're trying to beat the market returns. In this case, you might be paying a high fee for being invested with this money manager. So a mutual fund has has a money manager involved, but an index fund does not have a manager. It's actually passively managed. However, an index fund is actually a type of mutual fund. So I know that's a little bit confusing, but for the purpose of today's video, all you need to know that an index fund just implies that it invests in a stock index. An index would be something like the S&P 500. It's a collection of the top 500 companies in the United States, or in the UK, they have something called the FTSE 100, which is comprised of the top 100 companies in the UK. So an index fund investment seeks to automatically track and invest in all of the companies in that particular index. And that way, all you have to do as the investor is to buy the index fund. And by buying that one fund alone, you get a small slice of every company that is within that index. That means you're automatically diversified because your investment is now spread across say 500 or a thousand different companies. And buying an index fund is way cheaper than buying individually those 500 companies on their own. Not to mention it probably saves you a crap ton of time. As a financial YouTuber, keeping my content and data visuals organized across various platforms can be a headache. Finding video assets and keeping three team members all organized is like managing one big group project and it's crucial to be organized to consistently put out quality videos that educate you all. Now that's where Dropbox comes in. I've been using it with my team for the past couple of months to organize, edit, and access our video files from anywhere in the world. As you guys may or may not know, Ricky, my editor, is based in Toronto and I'm here in California. In addition, I have a short form video editor, Andrew, in Detroit. Dropbox is a great centralized platform that allows us to collaborate on files together all remotely, in addition to keeping track of where things are at all times. For example, I really enjoy their shared workspace and folders. You can search for a key term within Dropbox to find any file quickly, instead of digging around to find the correct folder that the video or document file is in. Not only that, with Dropbox, my team can access files on multiple different devices, such as our phone or our tablets, in addition to our computers. We can even do it from different locations, say a coffee shop or co-working space, and I personally like to visit those places for a change of scenery. Lastly, with version control, this will show you all the previous versions of the file and any activity that has happened to that file, including if it was moved or edited. And if you'd like to restore a file to its original version, you can do that easily. Now that I've been using Dropbox, I can't imagine running my business without it. No matter how large or small your business is, your team can benefit from a single place that keeps you organized for a reasonable price like Dropbox. Learn more by clicking the link down below. And thanks again to Dropbox for sponsoring this portion of the video. You may also hear people using index fund and the term exchange traded fund or ETF interchangeably. This is because most index fund have what's called an ETF equivalent and those two funds typically have the same exact holdings. There are some slight nuances in how they trade. So for example, index funds only trade once at the beginning of the day and once at the end of the market day. 
versus an ETF can be bought and sold at any time the market is open. Index funds usually also have larger minimum investment requirements, so sometimes in the thousands of dollars for some of the funds out there. And that's why if you don't have the minimum, you may opt for an ETF that tracks the index instead. For most investors though, the difference is going to be pretty negligible between ETFs or index funds. But if you are interested in the nuances of them, I will leave some further reading for you guys down below in the description. All right, so let's actually get started with the list of index funds today, starting with number five, which is ticker symbol FNILX. This is a Fidelity zero fee index fund that tracks the S&P 500. And one of the main benefits of this fund is that according to its name, it has no fees. Most index funds carry some type of fee and those fees usually come from licensing payments that the broker will have to pay to the S&P 500 for using that brand name of S&P 500. So what essentially Fidelity has done here is that they've created their own blend of 512 stocks in this case to mimic the S&P 500 so that they can avoid paying those fees and offer you a zero fee expense ratio type of index fund. This particular fund has been around for five and a half years and it has been tracking the S&P 500 returns since then. And you can see that the average annual total returns for this fund are right around 9.15% for the past three years and 15.81% for the past five years. Now the downside is, if you can even call it a downside, is that you need to use Fidelity's brokerage account and it's limited as such. Now, if you're already on the Fidelity platform, that's probably a good thing. But if you're invested in say a different brokerage, let's say you're using Vanguard, Webull, Robinhood, etc., and you're thinking about switching over just to buy this fund, I would say it's probably not that worth it. Since the other index fund fees that you're probably investing into on other brokerages are ideally quite low, say four or $5 a year for $10,000 invested, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Vanguard, for example, has an index fund under the ticker symbol VFIAX, and that also tracks the S&P 500, and the expense ratio is extremely low. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that index fund in particular later on in this video and why I I prefer that one over this version, so make sure to stick around for that. Now, if you're a complete beginner, the S&P 500 is typically what people refer to as the market. And when you are investing in the S&P 500, you can typically expect a return of around eight to 10% per year on average. Of course, if we were to look at the year by year performance, it's not like every single year returns eight to 10%. What you actually have in actuality is that some years are gonna be plus 20%, plus 15%, and then other years are gonna be down. So in 2022, the entire index as a whole was down close to 20%. Still though, this is going to be a really solid choice for most people and it's really nice to not have to pay a fee. It just adds peace of mind. Just be aware that if you ever want to transfer or leave Fidelity, you may have to sell this fund and transfer your money out that way, which means you might incur a capital gains tax hit. So you can't just simply transfer this Fidelity holding to any other brokerage. Index fund number four today on our list is VASGX. This is Vanguard's life strategy growth fund as they like to call it. And what that means is that it's a balanced fund comprised of 80% stocks and 20% bonds. The idea here is that it's designed to give you some of the upside of stocks while giving you some fixed income via the bond holdings as well as some international exposure. A portion of the stocks are actually allocated towards international and a portion of the bonds are also allocated towards international bonds as well. Essentially, it's like an all-in-one index fund that seeks to just give you an easy set it and forget it type of approach. Now, the way that this works is that overall, it just invests in four other Vanguard funds. So you'll get the total stock market index fund, the total international stock market index fund, an international bond fund, as well as a domestic bond fund, all from Vanguard. Now, just to give you some notes on international exposure, international stocks have actually underperformed the US for the past decade or so, but there are going to be some runs of decades in which international stocks will outperform the United States. You can see here that depending on the time frame, international stocks can outperform the S&P 500 and vice versa. So if you're someone who thinks that we will revert to the mean eventually, having some exposure in your portfolio of international stocks could be a good thing. Since we don't actually know which markets the United States or international stocks will be more successful in terms of investment returns moving forward. Having broad diversification is never a bad thing, but it might actually test your patience a little bit. This fund in particular has an expense ratio of 0.14%. So that means on every $10,000 that you have invested in it, you will pay a yearly fee of $14. This fund has returned about 8% uh, since inception and the three year return is not that great. But overall, I think that if international equities start doing better in the future, this fund could 
could see some upside. Now, one thing I wanted to share with you guys before we get into index fund number three is that Webull is actually giving away a guaranteed $50 worth of a stock as long as you sign up and fund your account with a minimum of $500. This is one of the better stock promotions I've seen in a while because a 10% bonus on your $500 deposit is actually quite good. Just make sure to invest it for the long term and that should be a really nice bonus for you. So the link for that will be down below and any link that you use of mine will actually help support the channel. So thank you for that. Okay, third on our list today is ticker symbol VVIAX. VVIAX is a Vanguard value index fund, which invests in the stocks of large US companies and market sectors that tend to grow at a slower pace than the broad market. That means it's typically investing in large, safe companies and in short, it's less about growth and more about stability when it comes to this fund. The return of this fund since it was started in 2000 has been roughly 7.42%. And in the last five years, it's returning just a hair under 12% at 11.99. As you might have kind of picked up from today's video, Vanguard index funds are some of the cheapest on the market with super low expense ratios. And this particular index fund has an expense ratio of 0.05%. That means for every $10,000 that you have invested in this fund, you'll pay about $5 a year in fees, which is pretty dang good. Now, this particular index fund has 328 total stocks within it. And the top 10 holdings include things like JP Morgan, Berkshire Hathaway, ExxonMobil, Home Depot, etc. The median market cap of a holding in this fund is $130.6 billion. So these are typically larger companies that are going to be pretty stable. The downside of this particular fund, in my opinion, is that since it's so focused on large companies, these companies may underperform the broader stock market, but in a downturn, they might not be as volatile as others. I think the other caveat that you must know about Vanguard index funds in general for this video is that you typically need need a $3,000 minimum to even invest in them. Also, Vanguard funds are typically only available on the Vanguard platform. So if you want to invest in it outside of Vanguard, or perhaps you want to invest a lower dollar amount, what you can do is buy the ETF equivalent instead, which is ticker symbol VTV. For example, if you pull up a brokerage quote, VTV is listed here for around $160 per share, and you can buy it directly like this on the market. All right, index fund number two today is going to be the total stock market index. And there are a few different ticker symbols for these depending on what platform you're on. So on Fidelity, it's gonna be F-Z-R-O-X and on Vanguard, it's going to be V-T-S-A-X. Now the Fidelity version obviously will have no fees or no minimums, but the Vanguard one, as you can tell, will have a $3,000 minimum unless you buy the ETF version, which is a VTI. The expense ratio is 0.04%, so $4 for every $10,000 that you have invested into it. And the beauty of this index fund, in my opinion, is that for one price, one fund, you get exposure to $3,000 704 stocks essentially every single stock on the stock market. This gives you the ultimate exposure to everything and ultimate diversification since you're buying basically everything. Now, when you contrast this to the S&P 500 fund, in this fund, you will own some smaller companies. So if you do want small cap exposure, this is the fund that you would want to buy. If you do opt for this fund, there's no need to add an S&P 500 fund in addition to this because you would just have overlapping holdings and it would be unnecessarily complex. Now, as long as the market goes up over time, you will be making money. Now, since this fund was created back in 2000 for Vanguard. The fund has returned 8.2% and in the last five years, it's returned 14.9%. So in that way, it is the one fund that you can put your money in and just forget about it entirely. I hope that you don't actually forget about it, but that's the entire gist is that you can kind of just let it kind of go on its own and it's passively managed and therefore your money grows in the background while you do other things. But I do think that there is another index fund that we should cover in today's video. And that is number one, VFIAX and the ETF version of this particular particular fund is ticker symbol VOO. If you've been watching my channel, you've probably seen me talk about this one. It is the Vanguard S&P 500 index fund. And in terms of all the index funds out there, I think it is the gold standard. The S&P 500 index is diversified. It has investments in over 11 different industries with not a single sector being more than 30% of the weighting. In terms of VFIAX, it has an expense ratio of 0.04%. So again, that's very cheap. The average expense ratio, by the way, if you didn't already know, is around 0.63% to 0.74% for many mutual funds out there. So it's good to note that this one is very reasonable. Now, if you do remember from earlier, FNILX, the Fidelity Zero Index Fund, also mimics the S&P 500, but I actually prefer the Vanguard one because 
This one in particular is actually tracking the index and it's not just being like close enough or trying to mimic the holdings. And I personally really enjoy that. In terms of the holdings itself, this particular index fund is weighted by market capitalization. So it invests proportionally into the companies based on how big those companies are. So that means right now this fund owns a lot of the Magnificent Seven. So Microsoft, Apple, Nvidia, Amazon, Meta, Google are all at the top of the list of holdings. In terms of the fund returns, since inception, it has averaged about 7.97%. And in the past five years, it's done pretty well at 15.76%. Now, again, just because this is a Vanguard index fund, you will need probably $3,000 minimum to invest, but you can always choose the ETF version, which is ticker symbol VOO. And that's what many people will probably opt for. So again, if there was one index fund that you could probably invest in for the rest of your life, I'd probably choose between ticker symbol VOO or VTI today. Those are the S&P 500 or the total stock market index index funds. But there are always going to be funds for different people and their preferences. And just because these funds have performed well over the past three, five, 10 years, it doesn't mean that they are going to continue that way. Still though, I like my chances of investing in an index as a whole, rather than investing in a bunch of individual stocks. Again, if you want that free stock from Weeble worth at least 50 bucks when you deposit $500, check the link down below. And then let me know what questions you guys have in the comments. And if you are interested in another video for investing, make sure to check out my investing for beginners video right here. It is really good and packed with a bunch of information. Thank you for being here. I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, peace.